Welcome everybody to Rhino6 Tutorials. We're gonna go over some of the basics commands just to get everybody started. We'll cover some of the more advanced commands in a later series, but let's just hop right into it. So Rhino6 is obviously a very good software for 3D modeling and uh, as well as drafting. I use it a lot for some of the projects that I do as well as the, the 3D printer. But on the left here, we have our toolbar it's got everything from uh, select, uh, point, line, square, cube, text, trim, explode, you name it, you can find it in here. A lot of people like to use these, but I, what I like to do is type these in on the on the taskbar up here. It's uh, It really is up to you, it's a, it's a preference thing, but if you do want to use these, make sure you're familiar with it, where everything is so you know where to click. On the top here, we have uh, another set of toolbars. So standard, C plane, set view, yada yada. We're not going to worry too much about these for now, but uh, we'll come back to these in a later video. Don't do not worry if you guys don't have this uh, tab right here. It's just a separate render that I use for Rhino Six, so don't worry about it if you guys don't have it. On the right here, we have our properties as well as our layers tab. Uh, these. You'll be familiar if you use things like AutoCAD. What these basically tell us, especially the properties, is uh, what these objects are, where they are, what materials they are, and basically it's an ID for the object that we have. In the Layers tab, uh, if you use Adobe or Autodesk, we'll be familiar with uh, layers, but it's how we keep things organized. You can create sub layers by right clicking new layers, duplicate these layers. You can also change the color of these layers, lock the layers, and show the layers. These are really uh, helpful tools to keep our project organized so we know what's going on instead of just a big mess. And yeah. So before we get started with our viewports, we're going to go up top to the file option and uh, scroll down to properties. Now under the Rhino options tab, we're going to go into files and make sure everybody has auto save turned on. I have it turned on every 10 minutes, but it's really up to you. You can have it on 5, 15, it doesn't matter. This will 100% save your butt, 100%. I've saved my butt thousands of times. I'm going to hit OK. All right, next thing I'm going to do is go into edit. I'm going to check on selection filter. This is also a preference thing. I really like it because it helped me select things way, 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 way easier. You can see this little bar pop up on the bottom. We're gonna go over it in just a sec. So the four viewports that we have on our screen right off the bat are perspective, top, front, and right. Now what these are is basically how you view the object. If I draw a cube by mouse over here to box, and I draw something like this really quickly, just randomly, we'll have a box right here. Now this doesn't look very 3D and Basically what's going on here is it's in a wireframe view. We're gonna change that to shaded. If you mouse over to this uh, drop down menu beside where it says the perspective name or the viewport name, sorry, you can change it to, we're just gonna change it to shaded because I find it it's the easiest uh, viewport to work with. And we can do that with every single one of these. A nice shortcut to this is if you press Control Alt S for shaded, it'll do the exact same thing. Okay, so in order to move or rotate our camera in the perspective view, we can use our right click mouse button and it'll rotate the camera. If you want to zoom in and out, we can use a scroll wheel to zoom in and out. And uh, if we want to pan the camera, we can hold shift and right click and that'll help us pan our camera. So the combination of these these three commands will have free reign over how we view the object in our viewport. What the top view does is basically it takes this object and it makes a top view like this. So you can see these two are now basically identical. With the front view, it's gonna do the north side. So it's gonna look like this on the front view. And with the right view, it's gonna take this side. And it's gonna look just like that. So these two are actually the same view. Okay, 
we're gonna go into the perspective view so we can do that by double clicking perspective and this will zoom in to just the one viewport instead of the four and we're gonna go over the snap filters or just the snap options so we're gonna hover over a single point just gonna make a nice point on the corner here as you can see it's on the corner where, where these three lines meet it's all nice and dandy we don't have to worry about it if we were to turn these snap options off down here so if i turn all of these off i'm going to try to do the same thing one more time hover over to single point we're going to click that and just going to place it as precisely as we can on the corner there looks about right yeah it's actually not in the corner <laughs> rhino will do this a lot so that's what happens when you have your uh, snap options turned off. It'll go all over the place. You won't know where it is. So make sure you guys, oh, look, it just auto saved. Very nice. Sorry. <laughs> um, so make sure everybody has your selection or sorry, snap options on. What I like to have on is end, mid, center, uh, point, sorry, intercept and perpendicular. So if we do that one more time, you can see that it'll snap right onto the edge like we want it. I'm just gonna make another point really quick in the middle here. You can see it snaps right to the middle. And I'm just gonna make a line really quick to demonstrate our next thing. Cool. Okay, so down here, what we have checked on here is our selection filter. And if you've never used things like AutoCAD before, how selecting works in Rhino is if we go from the top left down to the bottom right, it'll select everything that this bounding box encompasses. Now the object has to be fully encompassed for this to work. If I do the same thing again from the top left to bottom right, and I don't fully include the object that we made, the solid, then it's not gonna select it. However, if we go from bottom to, to top like this, usually bottom right to top left, Anything that this bounding box touches, it will select. So like this, although I didn't encompass the entire solid here, it also selected the solid. So just remember, if you go from the top to the bottom, it'll select everything that the bounding box fully encompasses. And from the bottom to top, it'll select everything that the bounding box touches. So the selection filters on the bottom here basically allows us to select only the things that we want. So if I just want to select this line, then what I can do is uncheck every single one of these and curves, which is basically lines. And no matter what I select, no matter how I select it, it's only gonna take this line. Uh, so instead of doing it the entire well, instead of unchecking the entirety of the selection filter, we're just going to turn these all back on. Okay. Now, a shortcut to doing this is if we hold control and then we mouse down here, you can see it's all unchecked. And we do the same thing. We're going to click on curves. You can see that it does the exact same thing, but we didn't have to uncheck every single one of these. Uh, now, keep in mind, this does only work once. So after you hold control and you click, and then you select the object, it'll go back to having everything checked. So every time you want to do this, you have to hold control again, and then just like that. Okay, uh, that just about covers it for some of the basics. And see you guys in the next video.